It is a beautiful day here in New Orleans, Louisiana. We are in the Garden District, and before we go explore it, we're gonna start off with a little breakfast. Today we're starting a district donut. It's a donut shop here in the Garden District. There was like a line out the door, and when we drove through the other day, we said, we gotta stop in there. I'm glad we did because their donuts look absolutely incredible. So we popped in, we got a few to start our day here. Um, this is the Sopapilla donut. It's a cinnamon sugar donut with a buttercream frosting on top of it and a honey glaze on it. So we're just gonna rip ourselves off a nice little piece there, lose the frosting. Oh no. We just ripped it in half. There we go. We got, look at that. I mean, look at how soft and pillowy that donut is. So fluffy. Yeah, it's so fluffy. All right, here we go. This looks like a good way to start our day here in New Orleans. Sopapillas are, I think, from New Mexico, right? I think that's what they said when we were in New Mexico. We're in New Orleans. This is a really good donut, though. I have here the cinnamon roll. We saw it, someone else order it and ahead of us in line, and we went, yep, we're getting that. Beautiful cinnamon roll, caramel sugar on top. Let's go. That is a treat. Um, incredibly decadent for the first thing in the morning. Luckily, we are going to go walk around the Garden District. So this will fuel us through that. Mm. It's just a sugar bomb on top. But it is absolutely delicious. Holy cow. Well, one of the things you can do here in the Garden District is actually take a donut tour. And we didn't take the donut tour, but tour came through. They got an extra blueberry donut, and it was blessed upon us. And so we're gonna try that. This isn't the donut we saw out, but it was the donut that found us. And that <laughs> might be the best donut. <laughs> it's very good. They're three for three so far. After some terrific donuts, we are now going to do a self-guided walking tour of the Garden District. We'll put a link in the description of this video to the walking tour we used. Um, so essentially, you know, you can join a group and do a walking tour, but if you go online, you can find uh, see your own kind of guided versions. It's better if you're on your own schedule, but I will say this, um, there's a lot of tour guides in this city and um, you know, it's their livelihood. They do a great job. Um, yesterday we were at the Mardi Gras World and our tour guide was fantastic. Um, so we are definitely pro um, kind of having a local guide lead you around the city. Really just depends on what your itinerary is, however. Plus we have a two year old and you know, we don't like to disturb other people with her presence because while we enjoy her and love her, someone else on vacation may not. So in the garden district, we are just surrounded right now by beautiful um, Victorian mansions. There's a couple other styles in there. I think Revival is one of them. Um, but you're just walking through these blocks and these houses are just magnificent. So we've stopped here at what is commonly referred to as the Anne Rice House. Anne Rice, the famous author who wrote uh, Interview with a Vampire, Queen of the Damned, like the Vampire series, wrote May Mayfair Witches, which I believe is set here in New Orleans, but I believe like this was supposed to be like the house from the book series. But she lived here in uh, like the 90s, early 2000s. And um, she's from New Orleans, but very cool. They, the plaque out front says it's the like Greek style Italianate mansion. So we're learning a little bit more about the architecture ourselves of the area as we're walking through, but a beautiful home, 
um, huge and just gorgeous. We, this neighborhood is absolutely incredible and um, definitely worth a trip over here. And a nice neighborhood to stay in too. You can rent a lot of, there's a lot of rentals in this area um, where you can rent out like a whole mansion for the weekend. So um, yeah, really, really cool. Yeah, really beautiful neighborhood. So we're gonna keep walking on our self-guided tour. We met up on the tail end of another tour, but uh, we're gonna continue our little walking tour on to our next stop. So behind me here, our next stop is the Carroll Crawford Mansion. And apparently Joseph Carroll threw some big, huge rager parties in the uh, like late 1800s. And uh, apparently Mark Twain liked to party here. So yeah, I hope the people who live there now throw some big ragers because this is a gorgeous, gorgeous home. Um, but that would be such like a cool, like fun fact if you own this house and you'd be like, oh, well, Mark Twain used to hang out here. I just think that's like, if you're ever doing like a get to know you sort of, um, like first day of work or school or something and you're like, oh, Mark Twain used to party in my house. I just feel like that's one of those fun facts that you throw around as much as possible. Absolutely incredibly gorgeous home. Well, I just feel like whoever gets to live in these homes is just incredibly lucky and very wealthy. Wealth and luck. <laughs> The houses we're walking by right now are called the Seven Sisters. And the story behind these houses is that there's an eighth house that the father owned. He had seven daughters, and so he built seven houses for them all to live in. Now that's not actually true, um, but that's the story. What's interesting about these is they're only, they're considered to be the only shotgun houses in the garden district. Um, a shotgun house essentially is a house where if you, fired a shot through the front door, that shot would exit through the back door. So um, they're actually uh, quite cool the way they're lined up, um, but they are, um, I mean, they're massive houses, um, but in comparison to some of the other, these other houses in this district, um, they are um, a little bit different. New Orleans really does embrace kind of like spooky culture with like, you know, I, the Anne Rice house has me thinking about how like, vampires, witches, ghosts, voodoo, it all just comes together here and is another like facet to their culture. I just think New Orleans has such a, so many different, like I said, so many different facets of their culture, such a unique culture that other cities just don't have between the Mardi Gras celebrations, like I said, the voodoo, the ghost stories, just um, so many really, really cool traditions. But uh, we're gonna keep walking on our little tour here. So behind me here is the Buckner Mansion, which is one of the most photographed places in New Orleans. Um, famously used in season three of American Horror Story Coven as the school that the witches attended. Um, that is a great season of that show. I think it's uh, a lot of people's favorite season of that show. Jessica Lange, Sarah Paulson, amazing, amazing actresses. But um, beautiful, it was built as a school in the 1850s. It was a business school. It's now a private residence. It is absolutely massive. I don't even know if like video does justice to how huge this home is, but absolutely gorgeous very uh nice lawn as well which i was saying there has to be a lot of pressure if you own these homes and you live in this neighborhood because you have to keep things immaculate in your garden um but very cool like i said there's a lot of witch lore down here it makes perfect sense american horror story 
would film a season down here. But um, that's, yeah, there's a lot of people out there taking pictures right now. It's a very popular spot and a uh, very beautiful home. And actually over here, there is a film crew that I'm noticing set up filming something. Um, here, let's take a look. Across the street there, you can see a uh, whole film crew set up. So, I don't know, maybe it's a movie, maybe it's a TV show. Lot of, lot of gear. Um, this is a massive production. It's gotta be a movie, right? It's definitely a movie or TV show, but it is a massive production or whatever it is. I don't see trailers, so I don't know. Maybe they're around here somewhere. We can find out if there's someone famous around. But, uh, yeah, huge crew. Uh, wow. Awesome. It's a cool house. We'll have to keep our eyes out for things that are filming in New Orleans coming up. I'm sure a quick Google and I can figure out what it is. That is cool. Look at us. It is a gorgeous location and not one that you have to like do a lot of work to. It's just, per they're just beautiful homes ready to go. Oh, I see trailers that way. Oh. I don't know, we'll look up, we'll look up what it is and if we figure it out, we'll put it a little asterisk somewhere or something in the comments below. Yes. You met a sweet doggy. You're a good boy. You have a beautiful home. You're a good doggy. No diving. No diving. Hi, doggy. This home here is the oldest in the Garden District. It was built in 1838. It is a Greek revival. And let's see if we can get another like side view. It's kind of uh, hidden. There's a lot of beautiful trees in front. So it's kind of nice. It's a little less exposed than some of the other homes. Um, but you can see a little bit. This one actually has a large yard because some of them are just more like little courtyards in the front, um, kind of maximize the space of the home and have smaller yards. But this one has a pretty good piece of property too. But um, yeah, 1838. We're gonna keep rolling and see what we find next. Absolutely loving this. Like, just wandering through this beautiful neighborhood and uh, coming across these historic homes is fascinating. If you're wondering about different styles, this one is Greek Revival. On occasion, I find that the ironwork on the gates outside of the mansions is uh, sometimes as interesting as the house. Behind me is the Barbie dream house in the Garden District. We know that it's pink and that if Barbie were to live somewhere, this is according to Evie, Barbie was going to live in that house. Well, this house is so big that I had to stand across the street to show it in the frame. Um, we're gonna go take a look at the plaque and see what it's all about, but I feel like uh, I keep looking at houses and going, well, that's obviously the biggest one in the Garden District. And then I walk around the corner and there's another house that's bigger. So that house is an example of the Italianate style here in the Garden District and it was built by a tobacco magnet. So a lot of money in the sins. We're talking like old tobacco money, like 1800s. One thing I do want to say is that it's been absolutely pleasant morning walking around the Garden District. Um, they suggest that you come either later in the afternoon. Um, kind of as the sun's setting or here kind of mid-morning so that you don't have the um, heat to deal with. The house behind me um, 
which you can get a little bit of a glimpse of through the front gate, is the home to a very famous movie star. It is um, Miss Congeniality, Danny Ocean's sister, and she married Ryan Reynolds, even though they weren't in love. But they fell in love in Alaska because they had a fake proposal. So um, it's kind of a widely known fact that this is that individual's house. Um, so we typically try to respect privacy um, of uh, and, and really not list where people are at. But I mean, it's kind of listed on all tours. So um, it's a beautiful house. We're also going to go walk in the street to find Benjamin Button's house. Of course, Benjamin Button ages backwards. So. And this behind me is the aforementioned Benjamin Button house, recently renovated. But Benjamin Button is next door neighbors to Sandy B. Only in Hollywood. Well, actually, only in New Orleans. Also in the Garden District is Lafayette Cemetery. Um, in New Orleans, it's below sea level, so um, the deceased are not buried; they're entombed over above ground. Cemeteries really aren't our thing, um, but cemetery tours are popular down here. So, if that's something that intrigues you, um, you can also do that in the Garden District. This blue awning is Commander's Palace. Um, very famous historic restaurant here in New Orleans. Not going to be eating there either because they have a dress code. And you know, it's hard for Madeline and I to go out to a fine dining dinner with a two year old who is not a welcome guest at any dinner table. We have had a very good time walking around the Garden District this morning. Um, it's been about two hours here. It's been very relaxing. It's been a very nice day. Um, but right now, believe it or not, we are hungry. So I think we're going to go to a local spot and get a New Orleans staple. For lunch today, we drove about 10 minutes and we're going to head to a local spot. And that is Domelis' Po' Boys. It's kind of a hole in the wall here in New Orleans. And they're openly open during the week. And they've been serving up Po' Boys for a long time. And We've been waiting. We've been waiting for the Po' Boys, and they're on their way. If Don is good enough for Peyton and Eli, I mean, it's, it's good enough for Adam and Madeline. We did, however, forget to put on our quarter zips. All right, so we have gotten our sandwiches here. We got one fried shrimp po' boy fully dressed and one roast beef po' boy also fully dressed. We actually have Swiss on that po' boy as well. We just got the small version. There are also versions with oysters, there's versions with catfish, just all sorts of different po' boys. Anything you can throw on a sandwich, you can do that here in New Orleans. So we're gonna just go ahead, we're not gonna wait any longer. You see the fried shrimp on there, the pickles, the, the dressing, the lettuce. It's on French bread. There we go. You can get po' boys everywhere. I'm gonna make it sort of Louisiana, Cajun, Creole, all across the United States. But there's something about food that when you're in the area it's from, it just tastes different. That's because I think, because they've done it for years and years and years. Um, this food just fits the area. Um, you got a little bit of heat coming through on that sauce, but love the fried shrimp, love the French bread. And uh, man, this is just hitting the spot after a long morning walk around the Garden District. This beautiful roast beef po' boy here. Oh my gosh. Lettuce, 
mean, that looks kind of messy, but it also looks absolutely delicious. There's this delicious gravy on here. Oh my God, I'm talking about it. That is fantastic. Oh my gosh. The beef is just cooked perfectly. The gravy on here is just rich and hearty. Just gets into your bones, this food. And like Adam said, they just, they just know what they're doing down here. These places are institutions that just knock it out of the park. That was good. Is my face messy? Probably. Yep. <laughs> I know I went shrimp first, but truthfully, what I wanted was this roast beef one. I mean, look at that. You got mustard on there. You got gravy on there. Wow. Food's making you happy before you bite into it. That's a good sign. For dinner tonight in the Garden District, we decided to switch things up a little bit. We found a spot called Union Ramen and the menu looked amazing. We looked through pictures and we're like, let's do that. We love our Southern food. We're loving the Cajun Creole dishes down here. But we've got a few more days here. We've got a lot more food to eat and we just decided to try something a little bit different tonight. For appetizers tonight, we ordered the crawfish and shrimp lumpia. It comes with a red pepper dipping sauce. That was something that we looked up beforehand. We saw it on Yelp and said, yes, we are ordering that. We also ordered the beggar's purse dumplings. There's a wide array of ingredients in the dish. It has pimento cheese, red wine reduction, blueberries, and cilantro. A wide array of ingredients that I cannot wait to try because it just sounds so good. Okay, we have the crawfish and shrimp lumpia just showed up. It looks delicious, nice and crispy. It's the red pepper sauce. Super crispy, delicious flavor. I'm mean, gonna love this sauce. It's kind of sweet. Not really spicy, it's a little, I like sweet and sour. All right, here's the pimento cheese dumplings. They look absolutely amazing. So much flavor going on in this uh, dish right here. We're gonna get a little red wine reduction on it. This is the chili sauce. We got tier one because we're kind of scared. <laughs> Flavor here. Holy moly. That is piping hot. Holy moly. The beef is delicious. The noodles, also. Mm. And then that egg just like coats everything and just a delicious richness. I don't know if you can really see. It's very good. Union Ramen knocked it out of the park. I love the way they incorporated kind of Southern flair and Southern food into some of the dishes like crawfish and uh, shrimp lumpia and the, uh, and the pimento cheese and the beggar's purse dumplings was absolutely amazing. Super rich dinner, absolutely delicious. But now we want a sweet treat. 
So we're heading for some beignets. We're here at Vintage for our late night beignets. They just came out, they're piping hot. They are covered in powdered sugar. We started the day with donuts. Now we're ending the day with donuts. And I mean, we're better to do that. We also got a specialty beignet. It's a s'more beignet. And it's stuffed with marshmallow and topped with chocolate and graham crackers. So biting into this, I've learned my lessons. Hello. Let's just cut it. Look at that. Oh man, wow. That is a s'more beignet. That is decadence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Holy cow, that is one of the biggest sugar bombs I've ever had. I mean, it's, it, it stays true to the s'more, but it is, it is a lot. My first beignet here in New Orleans. Absolutely delicious. You know, they're sweet. It's not overpowering. Um, nice and warm. Like Adam said, we started the day with donuts, we're ending the day with donuts. But this is the place to do that. This is a very, very cute place here in the Garden District. Another delicious sweet treat here in New Orleans. Vintage, very cute spot. Um, really love this area of the garden district this like main drag on magazine here where they have all the shops and really really having great luck with restaurants in this area so uh another fun day really exploring the garden district here in new orleans can't wait to see what we have planned next if you want to see more from our adventures in new orleans click right here don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one